Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Edmonton's new city plan is a pretty dramatic pivot from traditional plans. It plans for one million more people, the impacts of climate change, and the massive energy transition that's underway around the world. Hi, my name is Wanda Hassan, and I was the lead engineer on the development of the city plan, which is our long-term strategy for how our city grows, moves, um, and does all the great things that cities do. It all starts right at the top of the city plan in the first of five big moves under the innocuous title, Greener As We Grow. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you hit it right on the head, David. Like, actually, uh, our understanding is that this is the first um, official plan in Canada, at least, that embeds its carbon budget into its plan. Um, And that's a big deal because it means that everything within the plan has to be working towards that goal. So, like I said, so that's one of the goals is that we maintain um, our budget of 135 megatons, that we have net zero emissions per person, and that we plant 2 million trees by the time we achieve 2 million people. City Council declared a climate emergency in 2019 and instructed staff to update the city's energy transition plan to the 1.5 degree level of ambition in the Paris Climate Accord. Basically, the city plan is is a very broad, long-term document. Plans are setting out to 2 million people. So it sets us up for those big-term goals, big long-term goals. And then this, the um, energy transition strategy gets down to the brass tacks of how do we do it. The energy transition strategy calls for the electrification of transportation, the use of clean energy, and net-zero buildings. The city plan sets the tone for a more compact city, a shift to more walking, cycling and transit, and a much more energy efficient city. This is where the 15 minute city concept comes in. It means that you can, you know, walk, bike, transit to a park, to a to your grocery store, to a coffee shop. Um, you may still need to use your car to get to other destinations that are not within your district, but you should be able to do kind of all of your, the most common things that you do in your day within your district without having to use a car. doesn't mean you'll never use a car. You still will. And one of our, one of our big um, goals or targets in the city plan is to have 50% of our, of our um, trips made by active modes and transit. That's a big change. Currently about 2% cycle. 9% use transit, 11% walk, and a whopping 78% use cars. The plan tackles this by focusing 50% of growth in the core of the city and by enhancing cycling and walking infrastructure. You know, oftentimes when people think of densification, redevelopment, intensification, they just picture kind of concrete upon concrete, like nothing green in there. And it is so, so important. I mean, we're human beings. We thrive off of being near nature, around nature. And so it's really, I think it's so great that Blatchford plans such a wonderful park space, open space within the development. Meanwhile, Edmonton is developing a model carbon neutral community for 30,000 residents in its core that demonstrates what inner city livable neighborhoods can look like. Certainly Blatchford is transformational in so many ways, like it embodies a lot of what the city plan is trying to achieve in a neighborhood scale how the homes are built, you know, in terms of the energy efficiency of them. The fact that it's the location efficiency of Blatchford, the fact that it's smack dab in the middle of our city, close to LRT. Haweda Hassan is an engineer who worked on Edmonton's city plan. We've focused on the aspects of the plan that respond to energy transition, climate change, and reducing sprawl. There's much more in the plan. Learn more at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.